Hey there, so what do PIs look for in a postdoc? More specifically, what do I look for in a postdoc? But I think it's very generally applicable to other people as well. And details will of course depend on the specific position, if it's grant funded or it's more open, but I think some general points pretty universally apply. And so I look back on several dozen postdocs that we've hosted in our lab, and so as I think about why some people were particularly successful, I think they hit many of the points that I'm gonna discuss now. Of course, the first and by far most obvious point is, will this person contribute to the productivity of the lab? And this productivity is of course measured in terms of published output in the form of papers. Now, publications, they, they say a lot of things actually. So first of all, they say you could start things, but you could also finish them. And it also tells me, or the PI, that basically you could manage your time because, uh, you know, it's a lot of things that we have to do all the time. We have to plan an experiment, we have to execute an experiment, we have to harvest it, we have to analyze it in the lab, we have to do the statistics, we have to write it up. It's complicated, it's hard, it's difficult. So if people have produced a steady output, it means they can actually manage their time well. And then, of course, there is two kinds of papers, broadly speaking. There's the primary literature paper where you report on um, a research output. Now, the, the primary papers, what uh, people often look for in a, in a postdoc when they apply, for example, is do they have first author papers because it means that they have actually led the study. But it's also nice to see that a person has co-authored papers because that indicates sort of between the lines that they are also good co-workers, that they don't always need to lead everything, but they can also be team players and, and contribute to a project that is led by somebody else. So it's nice to have this sort of this mix of first author papers and co-author paper. You don't want to have only one or the other, I think, is what this means. Now, the other type of output is what you could broadly call opinion viewpoint uh, review type papers. Now, I like to see those as well, because they indicate that, well, first of all, depending on what this paper is, of course, you, you show by writing these papers that you have sort of an overview of your field, so you know what's broadly going on, you're not just looking at the specifics of the project that you have been working on, let's say doing your PhD, but you also look beyond that and you take in a topic in a more broad way and have an overview of that. So I think this is a very good and highly valued property, basically, or quality in somebody that they can do that. And of course, it's um, also evidence of critical thinking skills, right? If you, uh, if you look at the literature in a field or if you think about where should this field be going in more like a viewpoint paper, uh, yeah, well, it shows that you have critical thinking skills and they're going to be very important for your success. So you can tell, actually, papers um, can tell you quite a lot, but not everything. Uh, what I always look for is, will somebody be adding a creative spark? Now that's a bit more difficult, not impossible, but a bit more difficult to measure in papers. And it's also basically very difficult to find out during the interview, but it is something that is um, highly valued. This means, are you a source of ideas? Can you ask great questions? So asking great questions, novel questions, is actually by far the most difficult things we do in science, right? So if somebody is very good at asking new questions, coming up with new ideas, this is gonna be very highly valuable. And the indicators for that, um, you know, they're difficult. You know, does this person, for example, read very broadly? Or do they only really stay within their own particular little subfield? Or do they eat, read like more indiscriminately things that they just find interesting? Because very often new ideas and completely new ideas come from combining completely different sources of information. So this could be one indicator that somebody is very creative. Now, something that is much more easier basically to measure or to um, know uh, once somebody is applying is will they be enriching the lab with methods? Very often, not always, but very often people are hired specifically because they can bring certain methods or expertise to the lab. 
you know, this could be molecular biology techniques, it could be statistics, it could be knowledge of certain organism groups or whatever is required for the project or whatever is perceived as something that the lab could be profiting from. And so basically also via papers, but also other indicators, if you let little workshops or whatever on these topics, you can demonstrate that you are familiar with these particular techniques. But this is not all, because um, knowing some technique is one thing, and it's nice to add this technique to the lab, of course, but it will also add more to the lab if you, first of all, are willing to update your skills continuously, and is the evidence of that, for example, are you trying to be better at what you're doing? And also, can you share, and are you willing to share what you know with others in the lab? Can you teach other people in the lab? Do you have an interest in that? Because that's important, because if you want this technique to be established in the lab going forward, then it shouldn't basically die out with that postdoc leaving, because they, during their time, could have actually passed this information on to, let's say, technicians or, or, or other postdocs or PhD students so that this method can continuously be applied in the lab if it's an important one to the group. The next one is a, is a big one and, you know, maybe it's one of the more important, I think it's one of the more important ones. And that is, um, will this person be enhancing the team dynamics? That is something that is extremely important to me. Will this be a great addition to the lab in terms of the personality and will it make everything kind of work better and more smoothly? And will this person integrate well into the lab? Now, this is sort of more, if, if you're thinking about an interview, this is more something you get in terms of the vibes during interviews that people give off. You know, is this person a friendly person? Does it look like they are very easy going and get along with people during the interview to make connections, things like that? But it's also other traits, like for example, are you curious about what other people are doing in the lab? Would you, for example, ask a question, oh, what are, what, are, what are you working on, or what's your project? Or can people only talk about their own work, right? So this is some of the indicators maybe that you can use to ascertain if somebody would be a, a nice, basically, team player to add. But it's also things that will probably be apparent only much later is like, do you care about making the lab a better place? Do you think about how things could be organized better? Do you maybe make little workshops? when you have learned something, so you can spread these skills to others. Those are all things that will make the lab overall better and are basically invaluable <laughs> to um, making the team overall work better. Also things like, do you actively contribute in a meaningful way, in a respectful way to, to lab discussions? And this is also something that is very important to me uh, is these lab meetings and um, if somebody consistently makes high quality contributions to lab meetings on topics that they are interested in of course and then this is something that adds a lot of value to the lab. Uh, one other thing is that do you always lead <laughs> or are you also fine uh, playing along with others that is led by others? Can you contribute to others' work or do you always need to be the boss? Sometimes it comes out during interviews, but um, also over time that usually develops as people join the lab. And the last point I would label with, let's say, independence, maturity, responsibility. Like, do you take on responsibility, for example, for the reporting on the grant that funds you, for example? Do you understand how the lab works? Do you have an appreciation for all the, the stuff around this lab? You know, how the ordering works, how funding mechanisms work, how the admin is going on. And, you know, do you just take an interest in that? Do you appreciate this is going on? Or are you just expecting, you know, reagents to be always filled up magically somehow? And you have like no concept of what goes on except for like your own work. This is sort of this... Um, responsibility, maturity aspect that is a very nice feature to have in a person. Like, will they offer help with, like, say, grant writing, or will they make sure that there's always the reagents there? Will they basically just take responsibility for some of the things in the lab? I would also put under that header, are you basically on a pathway to, develop, to developing your own research line? Right? The idea is that a postdoc is um, 
a term limited appointment and then afterwards um, you go on sometimes to found your own lab. And so are you developing your own ideas to do that? You know, taking, of course, as a starting point, the research that you're doing in this lab, which contributes this project or um, whatever the case may be for your appointment. But are you thinking about your own stuff as you collaborate with the lab members and then these things that you could take on to basically run your own lab later on? And these three points could be essentially summarized with, are you a good colleague? You know, and so this is basically how we handle postdocs in the lab or how I view postdocs in the labs is that they are, they are current and future colleagues. Right, now to wrap up, so basically it's probably way too much to, not probably, it's way too much to expect uh, that a person will fulfill all of these points, right? This is unrealistic. But I think people that have been successful in the lab and have made this lab better by having been here, they have de definitely checked a bunch of these boxes, not just one. And so I think this is um, therefore an important quality of a, of a postdoc. If you know a great way to find out about these points during an interview, by all means, tell me about them in the comments. I think you can only go so far during the interview. This is a relatively time-limited framework for finding out about a person and how they would behave. Of course, you can also ask their previous supervisors and whatever. But I think many of these things also develop over time as somebody is integrated in the lab. We've seen this time and time again, that like there was some people took on a, a real leadership role or particularly uh, were particularly responsible for uh, things that were going on in the lab. There was no way this was um, basically predictable from anything that they had done before because they grew in this role in the lab and they enjoyed it. So I think this is just um, not particularly relevant maybe for the interview phase. This is something that um, develops as people are also growing in their role as a scientist in the lab. So if you're a PI or a postdoc, please le also let me know your opinion in the comments. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.